be one of the Medicare beneficiaries not getting all the benefits you qualify for. Make sure you're not missing out. Start your new day with WLKY Morning News. Breaking stories more people trust. An accurate what to wear forecast to rely on. With live traffic cameras to keep you on time. No matter what your day may bring. Fifth and Jefferson closed out of precaution. Planning your new day starts here. That's live, local, late breaking on WLKY News. Weekdays starting at 430. WLKY Morning News Emmy winner for best morning newscast. The mark of excellence in Kentucky broadcasting. WLKY News honored with the KBA Station of the Year Award. This is where there's some intense weather. Our commitment to deliver you trusted, accurate coverage every day. There's a little bit of rotation. Stories that matter in your community. Safety information you need. And journalism you can trust. Support continues to pour in. That's live, local, late breaking on WLKY News. WLKY News, your most watched local news station. Delivering you the facts. Covering the areas you call home. Making sense of the stories impacting your everyday life. Tackling breaking news with a focus on what you value most. Providing an accurate forecast today so you can prepare for the moments that matter. It still is rotating. That's live, local, late breaking on WLKY News. Stay connected with your trusted teams. Tune in tonight or anytime on the free WLKY app. Live, local, late breaking. This is WLKY News at 6. Good evening, I'm Vicki Dorn. And I'm Rick Van Hoos. The FBI converged on Bardstown again today in the ongoing search for clues into the disappearance of Crystal Rogers. Agents zeroed in on property connected to the family of her ex-boyfriend, Brooks Halk. WLKY's Alexis Matthews has been there all day. She joins us now live with what we know about the search right now. Alexis? Well, Vicki Rick, they are keeping us way back from where the search is actually happening, but this farm has been searched several times in relation to the 2015 disappearance of Crystal Rogers. And though nothing definitive has been found, Rogers' mother, Sherry Ballard, says her motherly instinct tells her something could be here. Every search for her daughter, Crystal Rogers, brings both nervousness and glimmers of hope for Sherry Ballard. I'm trying not to get too excited about it because I don't want such a letdown if nothing's found. Um, but at the same time, how can I not? In the FBI's latest effort Monday, federal agents searched the farm on Pasco Ballard Lane, owned by Brooks Houck, Rogers' ex. He is the only suspect named in the case, but authorities never charged him. Ballard says the property is likely on the Fed's radar because it's believed to be the last place Rogers was before she went missing. Until I find her, I'm just never going to be happy with that farm. I'm just... I always think that's the last place she was seen. Could she be there and maybe it was overlooked or something? Field agents searched this property by ground and air. And sources tell WLKY this is one of three places of interest the FBI plans to search. Ballard and her family hope any clue recovered could lead them to the justice they've been seeking. I'm ready for answers. Um, our family just needs answers. And... And I think they are getting close. Do I mean, are they going to make an arrest today? No, I don't want somebody to think I'm saying that because that's not what I'm saying. But I think every day they're getting closer. This search comes more than a year after authorities conducted a multi-day search on other properties in Bardstown linked to Houck. Ballard says the renewed efforts, while a step forward, are still a reminder of her pain. And she would not have made it this far without the love of her family and the community. Without the support of this community backing me, I could not be where I'm at today.
their search here tomorrow, but the agency is reminding the public that tips are still an important part of their investigation. So they're asking anyone with information into Roger's disappearance to come forward, and you can find that number to the tip line as well as the online submission link. Just click this story on WLKY.com. Live from Bartstown for you here tonight, Alexis Matthews, WLKY News. Thank you, Alexis. The reward has increased for information about the vandalism of a memorial to a fallen Bardstown police officer. Jason Ellis was gunned down nine years ago when he stopped to remove debris blocking exit 34 on the Bluegrass Parkway. The Nelson County Sheriff says someone damaged a metal memorial flag at that site sometime between October 9th and the 13th. The nonprofit Kentucky Cops added $500 to bring the reward to $1,500. New at 6, DNA has identified the remains of a Louisville man who disappeared almost two decades ago. Skeletal remains were found by a turkey hunter in Monroe County, Indiana in May of 20, uh, 2004. The private firm helped the sheriff's office collect DNA samples to identify Stephen Gabbard. The 38-year-old was in the Indianapolis area when he went missing. Police believe foul play was involved. Another lawsuit is filed against a Jeffersonville funeral home over its handling of remains. According to the lawsuit, in Jefferson Circuit Court, Ericho Vance paid Langford Funeral Home and Family Center to handle his mother's funeral. Officers recovered 31 bodies, 17 cremated remains at the funeral center in July. Vance does not know if his mother was among those found. Several other families have also filed lawsuits against the owner, Randy Langford who is also facing criminal charges. A Louisville police officer has quit after admitting to sharing nude pictures of a woman. Harry Cedars pled guilty last week to a misdemeanor charge. He texted pictures of the woman to 19 people without her permission. As part of the plea deal, he had to forfeit his law enforcement certification. Prosecutors also dismissed unrelated domestic violence assault charges against him. Cedars shot and killed a man during a traffic stop in November of 2020. He's still being investigated for that incident by Kentucky State Police. One person was killed in a shooting this morning at a Jeffersonville apartment complex. WLKY's Madeline Carter is live at the scene right now with what we know at this point. Madeline? Yeah, Rick and Vicki, I've been here for about seven hours now, but a lot of questions are still unanswered in this investigation. Here's what we know so far. One person is dead after a shooting here at the Hallmark at Jeffersonville Apartments. Jeffersonville police say it happened just before 1030 this morning on Paddle Wheel Court. That's where they found one victim who was shot and killed. WLKY Chopper HD flew over the scene earlier today and captured at least 20 evidence and shell casing markings on the ground. We spoke with the neighbor who lives across the street and watch the investigation unfold. This used to be a safe neighborhood and what's going on around here and how come someone could go through this at 10 a.m. I don't want to live in this type of fear. I don't want to live in a place that every day might something happen different. Now, I saw at least one car getting towed with a bullet hole in the side of it, but police haven't released any details about the victim or the suspect. Family and friends of the person who died gathered here earlier, many of them devastated when they heard the news. As soon as we get more information, we will be sure to update you. But for now, live in Jeffersonville, Madeline Carter, WLKY News. Thanks, Madeline. Louisville police are looking for suspects in a late night shooting in the Parkland neighborhood. Officers found a man just before 1130 Sunday night on South 26th Street near Johnson TMS. He was taken to University Hospital. At last report, he was in critical condition. If you have any information about the shooting, call the anonymous tip line 574-LMPD. The coroner identifies a Louisville man hit by a car over the weekend. 35-year-old Alan Green was killed early Saturday morning while walking along Preston Highway near the fairgrounds. He died at the scene. The driver did stop. At this point, no charges have been filed. New tonight at 6, a Jefferson County judge dismisses a lawsuit filed by the parents of a Butler High School student killed in a car crash. Police say Michael DeWitt was on drugs and alcohol, driving a stolen truck the wrong way on Dixie Highway in March of last year when he hit another car head-on. 17-year-old Madeline Trout was killed. DeWitt has been released from jail just two weeks earlier. The lawsuit claimed the bail project failed to investigate his extensive criminal history. But in her ruling, Judge 
Ann Bailey Smith said the nonprofit had no control whatsoever over his conduct after posting his bond and could not have legally prevented him from driving. DeWitt is fading, facing murder and other charges. He's scheduled to be back in court in December. A grand jury indicts a former Kentucky state lawmaker and cabinet official for rape. John Tilly was arrested in August by Lexington police. Detectives say he had sex with a woman at the Lexington Marriott Center Center. Marriott City Center. Uh, according to arrest records, the woman was too intoxicated to give her consent. Tilly spent a decade in the State House before serving as the Secretary of the Justice and Public Safety Cabinet in the Bevan administration. During that time, he helped reduce the state's backlog of untested rape kits. He's scheduled to appear in court next week. A Louisville Democrat says she's running for another public office, county clerk, to push back against what she says are election lies and voter suppression efforts. Tina Ward-Pugh served on Louisville's Board of Aldermen and then on the Metro Council after merger. Republican incumbent Bobby Holesclaw was first elected Jefferson County Clerk in 1998. The office oversees county polling locations. I'm concerned that we don't have a county clerk who cares about expanding access to those elections, you know. Um, and the more people, you know, that, that promote that and that we don't push back on, the more people believe it's true. I don't allow politics in this office. I, I don't think when you go to register your car, you care if it's a Democrat or a Republican sitting there waiting on you. I've, I don't look at anybody's party affiliation when they're hired. The Jefferson County Clerk also oversees legal records such as marriage licenses and vehicle tags. Indiana's lieutenant governor has tested positive for COVID-19. Suzanne Crouch had to cancel a visit to Jeffersonville tomorrow. She planned to visit a facility that provides mental health services. The 70-year-old is vaccinated and boosted. Her office says that she has mild symptoms and is working from her home in Evansville. Helping families in Florida rebuild after Hurricane Ian. Our Red Cross phone bank is ready to take your calls or you can scan the QR code on the bottom of your screen. How your generosity will make a difference. That's just ahead on the News at 6. And chilly conditions out there on this Monday late afternoon, early evening. We've been talking about this blast of autumn cool air to be moving in. Well, it has arrived. Tomorrow morning, you're going to wake up the temperatures right around that 32 degree mark in a few spots, maybe a little bit warmer than that in others. We'll talk about how long the chill is going to stick around in your backyard. That's going to be next. It's that time of year again, so I made the call. For 11 years, I've trusted Bryant for my home comfort. Routine checkups not only keep your system running efficiently, it can also prolong its life. My system gets regular maintenance, so I know that my furnace is going to perform its best, even in the worst condition. A trusted family-owned business since 1940. They've always been here for me. Schedule your preventative maintenance. Just $80. Propane service with feral gas is easy. That's right. Get your quote today. of excellence in Kentucky broadcasting. WLKY News honored with the KBA Station of the Year Award. This is where there's some intense weather. Our commitment to deliver you trusted, accurate coverage every day. There's a little bit of rotation. Stories that matter in your community. Safety information you need. And journalism you can trust. Support continues to pour in. That's live local late breaking on WLKY News. It's an experience that's like no other you're going to hate. Start your new day with WLKY Morning News. Breaking stories more people trust. An accurate what to wear forecast to rely on. With live traffic cameras to keep you on time. No matter what your day may bring. Fifth and Jefferson closed out of precaution. Planning your new day starts here. That's live, local, late breaking on WLKY News. Weekdays starting at 4.30. WLKY Morning News. Emmy winner for best morning newscast.
right now. This is WLKY News at 6. State leaders are urging Kentuckians to speak out and take a stand against domestic violence. This morning in Frankfurt, Governor Bashir signed a proclamation to make October Domestic Violence Awareness Month. The head of one nonprofit says domestic violence comes in many forms. It can be verbal, emotional, and mental abuse day in and day out. And that's pretty much the experience of most survivors. A lot of um, confusion, a lot of um, jealousy, possessiveness, name-calling, put-down, degradations, arguments over little things. The governor estimates 45% of women and 35% of men have reported some kind of abuse in a relationship. Some JCBS students had an important lesson on how to stop bullying. Third, fourth, and fifth graders at Bick Elementary were invited to school's gym this morning to hear from Jalen Arnold. The 22-year-old experienced a life bullying after being diagnosed at the age of eight with Tourette's syndrome, Asperger's syndrome, and OCD. He now travels to schools across the country to share his story. He hopes it inspires kids to stop bullying if they ever see it. Sometimes it can get like serious where, where the kid can either like hurting herself or hurting himself. Now I know that bullying is not good and if you get even if you get bullied, just tell the teacher. According to JCPS, roughly one in four students in the district have experienced bullying. The Kentucky Expo Center has welcomed more than two million guests this year, double what it hosted last year. And this week, the fairgrounds will host the Equip Expo, Expo for lawn and landscape professionals. Thousands of professional pieces of equipment will be on display. It's expected to bring more than 25,000 visitors, and this expo alone is expected to generate around $15 million for the city. In October will have 22 events and that'll generate about $25 million in estimated economic impact. This one event represents 65% of that economic impact. It's because of the scale, the enormity of it, and, and really the impact it has outside just the facility. The Equipped Expo will be held Wednesday through Friday. An agreement is in the works to end a months-long legal battle over Waverly Hills. The owners of Waverly Hills and the group that manages the property have reached a tentative deal to end their dispute over the former sanatorium and haunted attraction. Charlie Mattingly and the Waverly Hills Historical Society both tell us that they're still working on the terms of the agreement, but they expect to release details soon. All right, our phones have gone silent once again. Let's get them ringing. 893-3232 or scan that QR code you see on your screen. Volunteers from the Red Cross are here helping us out, collect money for those that were devastated by Hurricane Ian last month. Uh, Lance Mann, we talked to you earlier. We did get some good news. The Mega Millions winner was from Mort Myers, one of the areas hurt. What, wasn't that just that that money is going to go down there? But not everybody can win the lottery. That's right, yeah. We're, we're here collecting donations for Hurricane Ian relief. There's so much need in that area. We've had to serve over 31,000 overnight stays in our shelters since they've opened. We've served over 1.4 million meals to people who aren't able to get access to clean water and food. And so the need is real. We're there. We've got hundreds of employees in Florida right now helping with relief from both finding housing to serving food to mental, and, um, mental relief and, and therapy. And so it is real. We need all the funds we can get. Beverly Thompson called in with a donation. She had a sweet note to go along with that. We thank that. We thank all the individuals that feel it in their heart to help out the Red Cross. Yes, sir. These funds go to helping people who cannot help themselves right now, and that's when the Red Cross is there, and that's when we're at our best. All right. 893-3232. Keep the phones ringing. There we go. That's what we like to hear. We're going to make a final push here, folks. We only have about 15 minutes left to go for the donations on this telethon. Help out the folks who need it down in Florida. And who knows when the next disaster is going to hit. They've been backing up from the tornadoes here in Kentucky last December to the flooding in eastern Kentucky. Uh, it just you, you can't put a price on that. Thank you there, Mr. Porter. Oh, you can get It's teamwork. I'm going to get your, get your phone there for you. All right, 893-3232. Thanks to the Red Cross. Let's keep the phones ringing, folks. Now, your WLKY weather with Chief Meteorologist Jay Cardosi. All right, certainly a big change in the old weather department the past 12 to 24 hours or so. We went from 70s yesterday and also Saturday. Beautiful autumn weather for many of us. 
to the much cooler conditions. I know a lot of people like this stuff. I'm one of you, but nonetheless, this cool air, it's gonna be around for a while. That huge upper level low is the culprit. It has formed across the Great Lakes as we were talking about last week and underneath it, we're talking about a mix of rain and snow showers the farther north you go, but it has allowed the cool air to move all the way south into the lower Ohio Valley as well as the Tennessee Valley. And going forward, this chilly autumn air, it's going to be around through at least midweek as temperatures today is right around 70. Tomorrow, I really think we could be hovering in the upper 40s and low 50s for afternoon highs. On top of that, during the nighttime hours on into the early morning, real good chances that frost and or freeze conditions will be likely right on through Thursday morning. I think the absolute greatest threat for a widespread freeze and a thick frost is going to come a couple of times Wednesday morning and again Thursday morning. Here's tonight's setup. Now the National Weather Service has issued a freeze warning for tonight for the entire viewing area, but I think this is gonna be more scattered in nature. And I think for a couple of reasons, first off the wind, it's gonna stay up. And when you have a, kind of a gusty night, that prevents the temperature from getting to its lowest point. Uh, and I think that's going to, to play a role tonight, number one. Number two, some clouds will likely be moving into the region as the night wears on. And the thickest cloud cover being across about the eastern to northeastern one half of the viewing area. So the greatest threat for a freeze looks to be west of I-65 across our western communities. And that looks pretty scattered in nature anyway. Nonetheless, if you want to do so, if you have the delicate vegetation, eh, just kind of cover it up. Uh, because you're going to want to cover it again tomorrow night and the next night after that as well. Outside in town right now, we do have partly to mostly cloudy skies, a chilly 48 degrees, that humidity low, a northwest breeze still up to 16 miles an hour. That feel like is in the low 40s at this point in the game. Just about everybody now in the 40s, middle and upper 40s for the most part. You track farther south, Munfordville, Campbellsville, as well as Columbia, 50 to 52 degrees, but everybody will continue to drop off as the evening hours unfold. Look at that huge swirl. There it is up in the Great Lakes region producing rain and even snow showers. Believe it or not, I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see a brief flurry even in our area late, late tonight, early tomorrow morning from that deck of low clouds I was talking about. And there they are right there as they will continue to slip off towards the southeast as the night wears on. Now, when you wake up in the morning, there's gonna be a serious chill out there. Make sure you're bundled up. Temperatures a mix of low to middle 30s with the greatest threat for 32 degrees or colder off to the west of the metro. There are the clouds in the morning, perhaps, perhaps a flurry in a few spots. Otherwise, we'll go partly cloudy as we move through tomorrow afternoon. But don't look for a huge climb. Here are the afternoon highs. Upper 40s, low 50s for your Tuesday. Here's the forecast for this evening. Some passing clouds, breezy, chilly. The numbers will go from the 40s back into the 30s. Your seven day forecast will 35 tonight, 51 tomorrow, 34 tomorrow night, 55 Wednesday. We wake up to 32 degrees. That's the city, mind you, Thursday morning. That's when I think we have the best chance for a, a widespread freeze. But we quickly come out of it. Here come the 70s just in time for the weekend. 80 degrees one week from today. So that's just about the time I'm thinking, man, it's cold. Yeah. I'm gonna bounce right back. And that's what happens this Eight time day. of year. How about that? Yeah. Yeah, big warm up on the way by the weekend. Okay. Take it. No. Thank you, Jay. Sure. Morning madness. One Southern Indiana high school wasn't going to wait long to hit the basketball court. Sports is next. It's that time of year again, so I made the call. For 11 years, I've trusted Bryant for my home comfort. Routine checkups not only keep your system running efficiently, it can also prolong its life. My system gets regular maintenance, so I know that my furnace is going to perform its best, even in the worst condition. A trusted family-owned business since 1940. They've always been here for me. Schedule your preventative maintenance, just $80. Propane service with Feral Gas is easy. That's right. Get your quote today. Let the
the Ghoul Times roll for lung health, eat, drink, and be scary. Join us Friday, October 7th at the Olmstead for the American Lung Association's annual Breath of Fresh Air Bash. Visit BOFAKY.org for tickets and more information. Get the most out of your mornings with WOKY News at 9. Plan your day with our accurate forecast. Stories that'll have everyone talking. Get in the know. Join WLKY News weekdays at 9. The mark of excellence in Kentucky broadcasting. WLKY News honored with the KBA Station of the Year Award. This is where there's some intense weather. Our commitment to deliver you trusted, accurate coverage every day. There's a little bit of rotation. Stories that matter in your community. Safety information you need. And journalism you can trust. Support continues to pour in. That's live, local, late breaking on WLKY News. WLKY News, your most watched local news station. Delivering you the facts. Covering the areas you call home. Making sense of the stories impacting your everyday life. Tackling breaking news with a focus on what you value most. Providing an accurate forecast today so you can prepare for the moments that matter. It still is rotating. That's live, local, late breaking on WLKY News. Stay connected with your trusted teams. Tune in tonight or anytime on the free WLKY app. With Fred Calgill, this is WLKY Sports. Hello again, everybody. Today was the first day that Indiana high school girls basketball teams could hold their first official practice. WLKY's Andrew Shinoff says the Providence Pioneers took advantage of the opportunity and did something unique. While many of us were getting our first cups of coffee for the day, the Providence girls basketball team was already on the court. Let's get them all here. Let's do morning madness. That's exactly what the Providence Girls Basketball Program did on Monday. You know, I think they thought they were going to come in and be doing a shell drill and 11-man break and putting in offense and defense at 6.30 in the morning. So I explained to them we were going to have some fun with it and make it like a madness type event. They, they were on board then. The Pioneers celebrated the first day of practice by hitting the court at 6.30 in the morning as they hoped to be the first team in the state of Indiana to practice. Was it easy to get up today or was it was there that added excitement level knowing it's day one? It's definitely hard to wake up but then excited once you got here to see everybody. It's pretty early in the morning. I've never woken up at 5, uh, 5.30 in the morning. So it's kind of hard, but it was fun when I got here. Fun because it was not a normal practice. It was also a celebration. For instance, there was a light show and multiple guest speakers like ESPN Radio's Bob Valvano. The overarching message was you've got to work hard. Anything in life that's worth doing, you've got to put in the work. Uh, and this team has a lot of talent. I think they're willing to put in the work. And, you know, and we'll see you know, where that goes. And you know, we've got an opportunity to have a special season. Uh, whatever that means, you know, we'll find out. There will be plenty of time to find that out. But Monday, it was about hitting the floor as a team and also finding the right donut to have for breakfast after practice. It was easier. Andrew Chernoff, WLKY Sports. Thanks, Andrew. UK basketball is ranked fourth How in the AP preseason poll. Really North Carolina is number one. Antonio Kentucky returns so National much. Player of the Year Oscar Shibway, plus starting point guard Sophie Wheeler, and the Cats have another highly ranked incoming uh, freshman class. Mark Kentucky's first exhibition is uh, October the 30th, hosting Missouri Western State, and its season opener, hosting Howard, is three weeks from tonight. IU basketball's 13th in the new uh, AP preseason poll. It's the Hoosiers' first ranking in almost four years. And it's highest preseason ranking in six years. They return star big man Trace Jackson Davis. Indiana's first exhibition game is October the 29th, hosting Marion University. And its season opener, hosting Moorhead State, is also three weeks from tonight. And UK football is ranked 19th in the new AP poll. Kentucky's records are now 5-2 and two overall, 2-2 two and two in the SEC. After a win Saturday hosting Mississippi State, the Cats have this week off. Their next game is a week from Saturday. The third-ranked unbeaten Tennessee. That game time was set today for 7 p.m. That'll be quite the game. Some yeah, good football this being, past yeah, weekend. It was <laughs> great. It was great. Fun to watch, for sure. And back to Andrew's story, is any donut a bad donut? No. Point taken. Oh, point taken. So. Yeah. <laughs> well said.
Thank you so much for making us your first choice for news. The CBS Evening News is next. We'll see you back here tonight at 11 o'clock. Thank <laughs> you.